celebration, which she has come to know and love. And this is Dr. Nuhua. So, my warrior, my Vietnam veterans, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to take you back to this night. It's about 34 years ago. This night was the darkest night of my life I ever do remember. I was sitting in the room with several others and waiting for the right time to go to the boat. I waited and waited and suddenly I heard the loud noise from the main door across the organ. I stood up out of my room and saw the man with the long rifle in his hand. I immediately recognized the Viet Cong police. I turned to the back door and it ran out of the house as quickly as I could. The fear was tremendous. My breathing <coughs> was so fast. My heart racing heavily. And the panic was so, so unbelievable. I was so scared because I knew I would get shot, killed, or captured and sent to the deep jungle for the hard labor by the communists of Vietnam. My name is Dr. Duco, and I'm from Vietnam. I was born in the early 60s, and we were born in the war zone. I saw the terrible killings and destructions of the war when I was just a little boy. I witnessed the brutal acts of the communists throughout my childhood almost every night. I heard the sound of the machine guns and explosions. The war had thrown the lives of many poor families into complete turmoil. My mother had worked so hard so our family could survive. The communists of North Vietnam have caused the killings and destructions have burned in my brain. I have, they have no regard for peace or the life of innocent people. Even though I was just a small boy but I remember very well. During the New Year holiday celebration of 1968, they took advantage of the people who were caught completely, completely unaware and launched a massive attack to the people of South Vietnam. But the communists failed to realize that the people of the South were strong and brave. The South Vietnamese and the American armed forces stood up together, pushed back, the barbaric demons. They decisively defeated the communists in the Tet Offensive 1968. Please allow me to say this again. The Vietnamese and the American officers stood up together, defeated the communists in the Tet Offensive 1968. After deterring the hill invasion from the north, and the people of the South trying to resume their normal lives. However, the North Vietnam communists continue their evil ambitions to take over the internationally recognized free and independent sovereign nation of South Vietnam. The war went on. My family, just like any others, continued struggling with our lives. Then came the darkest day in April 1975. The North Vietnamese army launched a massive full-scale invasions to the South Vietnam with more than 200,000 troops that brought the collapse, the false Saigon, the tragic disaster and suffering to the South Vietnamese people. South Vietnam had fallen into the hands of the communists. We lost our country. We lost our freedom. Consequently, the people had to accept their fate we have to live under the cruel oppression of the communists. I was just a young boy, and I experienced the first hand of the poor manual labor throughout my teen years. It was obvious there was no future here, and I knew I had to find a way to get out. Just like millions of my desperate, frightened people who risked their lives to escape the communist oppression. I, I knew I wanted to follow the path, the path of my brother and sister had been fighting for 
the path of freedom. I still remember so well how our men and women fought for freedom. My Vietnam veterans, I saw you there. You have been in my village scouting and fighting the enemies. I saw you standing tall heroically with the South Vietnamese soldiers, defending us against the communists. I saw you helping the sick and the injured Vietnamese people. I saw you protecting my village and making me and all the children laugh. You brought freedom and security to my village. You are our angels. I know you are serving and fighting not only for your country, but also for 25 million men and women and children of South Vietnam. Since you left my village, I've tried to follow your path, but the path didn't come easy for me. I tried to escape 11 times before my boat could make it out to the ocean, but the danger did not stop there. Our small boat were very crowded with desperate people. We sailed for five days and nights in the deep sea with strong winds and big waves and this tiny watercraft did not reach our destination. We were lost. Water and food were running out. Fuel for almost gone. And worse storms were about to come. People on the boat knew they were facing imminent death. We began praying to God to take our soul to heaven so our body could sink to the deepest ocean floor. My dear friends, there were almost half a million book people lost their lives through their escapes in many different ways. Also thousands of the people got killed escaping by foot through the jungle of Laos and Cambodia. Their desperate journey was full of great dangers and horrors. Their little helpless boats were not just facing strong storms and big waves, they were also facing the worst nightmare from the Thai pirates, the animal cruelty, beast pirates, beaten, dropped everyone, and wrecked the women in front of the husband and their families. And in many cases, they did kill the entire hopeless people on board. I was so fortunate and blessed. In September 1982, I finally got an airplane ticket to come to the United States of America. It was one of the happiest days of my life. I knew I was about to reach my destination, the destination of freedom. People like us who experience the tyranny of the communism know very well freedom is not free. My Vietnam veterans, thank you for showing me that you have so much humanity and kindness in your heart. And thank you <coughs> for showing me what freedom is all about. I knew I was blessed and lucky to have a place to escape to. That place called the United States of America, the last stand on earth. But I came here, not just to say thank you, I came to tell you that in December 1987, I was very, very proud to become one of you. As soon as I had studied so hard and learned how to speak, read, and write English, I joined the United States Navy. My dream came true. I joined the United States Navy so that I could serve and give back to my new motherland. Yes, I was standing tall side by side with my service men and women to help protect our beautiful and decent world of free enterprise and democracy. I was so proud and happy to serve my new country on the magnificent aircraft carrier 
CV66, USS America, had gone through the most struggles to seek for freedom. Then I fought to protect it. I realized people shouldn't take freedom for granted. I therefore wrote the book, The Escapes and My Journey to Freedom. My dear friends, I wrote the book through my eyes. This is the story of life and death, good and evil, hardship and fortune. But the most important of all, this book will tell people freedom is not free. I would like people to understand the real faces of the communists of Vietnam. I also need to tell people the other side of the Vietnam War after the fall of Saigon. My Vietnam veterans, I saw you there and thank you. I could not thank you enough. More than 58,479 Americans' lives and more than 300,000 lives of South Vietnamese soldiers have paid the ultimate sacrifice in fighting for freedom of Vietnam. May God bless their souls. There was more than 662 American prisoner wars in the Vietnam War. How could you begin to imagine what our BOW went through with the barbaric communists of Vietnam? The brutality of cruel, ruthless communists caught great pain and suffering were far beyond any descriptions. My POWs, thank you for your service and sacrifice. There was almost 3,000 missing in action. Decades have passed, but I know the agonies are still with their families. Today, I would like to thank to those brave souls who ultimate sacrifice and make the world a better, better place for all humanity. To all our Vietnam veterans and families, thank you. Dear my Vietnam veterans, we know you will answer the call from our President Kennedy, who said, ask not what your country can, can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Be men and women were willing to side up to the armed forces and delay pursuing their personal dreams. You have shown you put your country first and joy this noble cause. Our Vietnam veterans were the men and women of their times. You gave your energy, your faith, your devotion to this endeavor. Freedom for all. You understood the cause of freedom and fought for that noble cause in spite of the great dangers. You represent the real Americans who refuse to live on our knees and willing to die on our feet. My Vietnam veterans, the United States military definitely did not lose Vietnam. The United States military never lost a single battle during the war. The United States military left Vietnam on the order of its politicians. The conquest of South Vietnam by the North Vietnam turned our country into a nightmare for our people. The darkest day in our history resulted from the fall of Saigon and thereafter the two horrific images for at the fall were far beyond words. <clears throat> Millions of innocent trying to flee their homeland and died by hundreds of thousands. I myself, just a young boy, had to escape 11 times. The pain and suffering are still with me until this day. President Ronald Reagan said, ending the conflict is not so simple. Calling it off and coming home because the price for the Kaya peace could be a thousand years of darkness for generations Vietnam born. It is so true. The whole country of Vietnam had been in darkness. The entire country 
of venom had been in agonies. What kind of peace is without freedom? Peace, freedom, and liberty need to work together. Once our president, Thomas Jefferson said, when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. The fear for the people, for the Vietnam communist regimes, has been tremendous in the last several decades. My Vietnam veterans, thank you. Thank you so much for everything you did for us. Please be proud that you step up and serve your country in fighting for more than 25 million men, women, and children of South Vietnam. My Vietnam veterans, thank you for letting me have this opportunity to speak with you today. But this is not just my voice. This is the voice of the entire people of South Vietnam. Please accept this grateful word from our heart and souls. Thank you so much for your service and sacrifice in fighting for a morale and noble cause on our behalf. May God bless you. Thank you and welcome home. Thank you and welcome home. Next year, <laughs> 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 share some of the things after your your experience with the USS America and your journey to where you are today. I think everybody needs to know what you've taken advantage of freedom and so forth, and what you and your family have done. Right after I I landed in this country, I immediately walked to school with a lot of ESL. I wasn't allowed in high school because I was beyond the age. I walked to churches and learned word by word, by word in English. I finally got my GED through riding the ride with my friends and then um, to college. But I realized that we have paid so much, especially our Vietnam friends, for the freedom of Vietnam. I realized I owe our men and women who fought for my country. I joined the U.S. Navy in 1987. I was so lucky to happen to be happy working in an aircraft carrier, U.S. America, and I became one of the jet mechanics to working on F-18 Hornets. And I tell you, I still missing those days in <laughs> a dangerous place. Um, but I would dream to become a jet pilot because I saw that I have not pilot to fly the airplanes. My dream didn't come, come true in that area. I got hurt. I got injured during light duty. So I, instead of becoming a pilot, I become a pharmacist after I got out of <laughs> I'm willing to answer any question if you have. One of the things I wanted to mention, um, some people ask me, why did I do U.S. Navy? Why not the Army? Why not the Air Force? When I was still in Vietnam, before 19, um, before I escaped, which is 1978, 79, uh, back then, my dream was to get out of the country, uh, away from the communists. And it, I heard so much about uh, aircraft carrier was on the uh, South China Sea. I heard so many rescue missions on the water. So, um, and when my boat was floating on the water, without knowing where we were, we kept scouting, looking far beyond the horizon to pray that the aircraft carrier would come and rescue us. But that didn't happen. But luckily, I got rescued by a, a German ship, this one right here. And they brought up to safety. <clears throat> Otherwise, I wouldn't be here to talk with you. <laughs> but. Um, when I got here, and when I decided to go to the Armed Forces, I chose the U.S. Navy because I figured in 1987, people still escaping the country of Vietnam. 
I my dream was to see from my own eyes. My, my real experience, if I could see the boat, a little tiny boat around water from my aircraft carrier. I was lucky. My, on one deployment, my boat diverted to my, my work to Sikh fleet, so we supposed to be on the um, Mediterranean Sea, not on the uh, Pacific Ocean. But somehow my boat got it out to the Pacific Ocean, and we got it to Singapore area. I was so happy. I was so happy. I was praying that I would see the boat and rescue these boat people. And it didn't happen. But my dream was that's why I become a sailor, U.S. sailor. Sign Jerry Fitzgerald, the guy who's six. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, of course, as a member of Pink Iron, we expect you to come back once in a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's, it's extremely honored.